Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here in the Fuzzy Biker Garage and check out what I got behind me today. Got this at the very last minute, didn't know I was going to be riding it. They said, hey, take it for the day, put as many miles on it as you want. I think we're going to try to, I've got to go out of town today, so it's going to be about 250, 270 miles, we'll find out. We'll talk about what it is at our next stop, but just real quick what's been added to it. It's got the skid plate on it, it's got these nifty military bags and brackets. This is something really interesting, and I'm not sure how I feel about this yet. I love the way these mirrors look, so it's got these end, end mirrors, but uh, they're down low, and I've never really had a bike with mirrors like that. And let's just say it's been interesting. Uh, also, this bike has engine guards on it, so I will catch up with you all at the next stop. Wahoo. All right, y'all, we have made it to A-Town, Iowa. The only stoplight in the county right there. Big old Main Street right here. It changes, but yet it stays the same. That's new. Big old, uh, that's pretty, next to the bakery there. This is the uh, famous movie theater right here. Check that out. They rebuilt that whole thing, the Ritz. They did everything but put sticky floors in it. When I was young, and the floors were always sticky. Beautiful Art Deco style courthouse, 1939, I believe. Beautiful tree. Look at that old mansion there. That's called the Stewart Mansion. Let's take a look at the front of it. I used to live in the very top of that. That had gotten, that had been turned into apartments. It's now a single family home again, thank goodness. Beautiful old house on the inside and the outside. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. <laughs> And this was the house with a dinosaur. Hey, we are at the original Fuzzy Biker Garage, just behind that door. <laughs> Anyhow, check out this hot rod. It is a Royal Enfield Shotgun 650 Parallel Twin, air-cooled, oil-cooled. There's the oil cooler. It has a 648cc uh, engine, single overhead cam, 9.5 to 1 compression, four valves for solar. Look at that piano gloss engine cover and valve cover. Yeah. That puts out about 47 horsepower, 38 foot-pounds of torque, and 52 newton meters, or 52 newton meters, however you want to put it. Has an absolutely beautiful six-speed transmission. I just love the transmissions on these things. Front brake is a 320 millimeter single disc with ABS and a dual piston by Brie Calper. Check that out. On the rear, and this is really amazing. Again, ABS, kind of hard to see back there, but it's a 300 millimeter single disc ABS with a dual piston vibrator. How can I get you a picture of that? Maybe right there. But it's a dual piston vibrator in the back. So massive brakes on this bike. Front tire is a 190 18 versus the 19 inch that's on the uh, Super Meteor. Rear tire is a 150 70 17 versus the 16 that's on this, the Super Meteor. And again, this has got the uh, cast wheels. So the tires are tubeless. I love the way these things handled. It's got inverted forks. 43 millimeter inverted forks. There's about 4.7 inches of travel there. That's uh, 120 millimeters. On the, on the rear it has dual shocks. Now I've got it written down here that it has uh, 90 millimeters of travel, like three and a half inches about, a little more. Seat height is 31.3 inches. That's about 795 millimeters. That's about about two inches taller than my Super Meteor. I mean, that's quite a bit higher. And I think that's one of the reasons the bike handles so differently. I also think they changed the rake angle up here. Wheelbase, 57.7 inches. That's a little bit less than the Super Meteor. That's uh, 1,465 millimeters. 3.6 gallon gas tank, slightly smaller than the Super Meteor. That's 13.8 liters. Wet weight is 530 pounds, or 240 kilograms, about the same as a Super Meteor. The Super Meteor day, right? <laughs> but I love the styling on this thing. You know what? Let's talk about the styling at the next stop. How's that sound? I got to keep on moving, guys. I got a long ride today. Wow. We have made it to the edge of Coon Rapids, Iowa, home of Garst Seed Company. At least it used to be years ago. Here, just down the road is uh, White Rock Conservancy. That was land owned by Garst years ago. And they have, uh, it's a 5,000 acre plot of land or groups of land that have been turned into a wilderness or wild area. There's camping, canoeing, bicycle riding, hiking, everything you can imagine on it. Beautiful area back there. I mean, all kinds of wildlife. If you ever get a chance, get yourself down here and check that place out. This park here on the left, which I call Dinosaur Park, and you'll see why in a second. It's kind of a little roadside art park. You know what? We might as well check some other things out too, huh? There are the dinosaurs. This is a big old face. I don't know whose face it is. Look at that. Isn't that something? A little bit of, uh, I don't know what you call that, geometric art. 
this one I really like, you know, having grown up here in Iowa, the uh, fence post art there, those are all fence post. And this is an example of a, it looks like a plow bottom to me. Alrighty, my friends, I promised we'd talk a little bit about style. This seems like a good place to do that, an art park. We're about 60 miles into the ride right now, and uh, I just got done doing about uh, 25 miles of my favorite back roads, you know, rural back roads, fun stuff. And this bike performed like a champ. I mean, it just, it handled well, it was comfortable, it was, but you know what, we're not here to talk about it. We'll talk more about that at the next stop, other than it's a comfortable, fun motorcycle. Uh, so the styling, what do y'all think of that? All the sheet metal, all the body work is different then the Super Meteor, here I am comparing it to that again. I think it has the same frame, although I think the rake is different. The front end is certainly different. This has got this uh, aluminum nacelle on the front. This really stylized thing here. It's got different fenders. These are kind of like a Mako Shark. I got dust all over everything. Look at that little uh, assemblage right there. Isn't that neat? LED headlight on the front. We're going to try that out tonight on the way home. I love the rims. Wheels, I guess they'd be calling a bike. On this bike, they did put a uh, skid plate on the bottom, contrasting color to make it show up a little better. I love the pipes on these. These are a lot like my classic 350. You know, they got the little end on them. Absolutely amazing. Hey, what does this say? Hey, Royal Enfield. These bags are, well, ro they are Royal Enfield. I've got a set of those on my classic 350 and I love them. The tank is different. It's got a little bit smaller tank than the Super Meteor. Look at this little assemblage again here. Very nice. Everything is blacked out. It's got the gloss on the end here. Different uh, engine cover on this bike. I like how everything's just, everything is just blacked out. I like the black engine bars on there too. You know, by the way, all of this is metal. Everything, even this is metal. I mean, it's just the rear fender, air, I mean, everything. It's got the loop frame, like the classic Royal Enfields of days gone by. It's got, this is uh, blacked out on my bike. That's chrome. I've got a super meter. Again, the rear fender is different. It's cut a lot shorter, a lot higher up. It also has that kind of a Mako angling. There's two angles here. Here, then here again, and then same on this side. You know, they've done a really good job of that. It looks like it has a tail tidy already. It's very short. The seat is an interesting thing. When I looked at the seat originally, I thought, well, that can't be very comfortable. I'll tell you right now, it, I've been very happy with this seat. These are my Royal Enfield gloves. Check those out. Carbon, well, you don't want to hear about that. But uh, it doesn't look like much, does it? But it's actually very comfortable. Again, the side covers are different than the uh, Super Meteor. Every piece of bodywork is different. And the rear shocks too. Different part number and everything. Just quite a machine. It's got the swoop levers. Um, I did a video where the, the new interceptors and GTs have these levers on them now. And one of the things I noticed right away was that the uh, it felt like it had more range. And obviously you don't. Obviously the range is the same. By the way, they're adjustable, both the brake and the clutch. Because of the swoop, I think your hand uses the lever differently. And you feel like you have more range. You have more in your hand, you have more feel with the, with a lever like that, I believe. That's my opinion. You know, while we're up here, let's check this out. It's got the big old Oculus, as I like to call this thing. Analog speedo on the outside. All the information you need right here on the inside. You know, it's got the uh, digital fuel gauge, an always visible gear indicator, always visible clock, trip A, trip B, and an odometer down here. And all those settings are found with this button over here. It's got an oil light which is awesome for a motorcycle. And more important, it's got this little light here, the battery light, and that's that's really nifty. Here you've got a trip meter. Something else to point out here, this is a the same color as the nacelle, as the tank. I mean, that's really neat. And this is a gloss black here, by the way. Just, you know, really well done through, through here. Information button, pass to flash, low beam, high beam, blinker, horn. Over here, it's the kill switch run switch, and then rocker to start. Hazard lights, fuel, brake lever, of course. They just, you know, all the little details are covered here. All the little things are, are kind of done right, I believe. Now the bags were added by Baxter Cycle. I like these kind of bags. I've got them on my Classic. I think I said that earlier. I, I, you can get a lot in there. These bags will double in size. They got little pullouts in them. Very well done motorcycle. Very well done motorcycle. Next stop, we will talk about handling, performance, braking, all that neat stuff. Just a heads up there does all that stuff pretty darn well and the brakes are fabulous all right catch y'all hey, there we have made our way to ames iowa iowa state university it says directly in front of us i think that is the famous jack trice stadium a lot of tailgating goes on there if i knew more about sports i'd tell you the name of that famous basketball player we just had oh wait that was university of iowa <laughs> 
Beautiful day for a ride. I've got about 126 miles on this motorcycle already today. Uh, seating position is uh, not upright. You are leaning forward on it. The bars are pretty narrow, but you do lean forward. The seat is quite high on, on my tippy toes on both sides of the bike. It's a very comfortable bike. Well, let's go back. My hips and my knees are about the same height as usual, but my heels feel like they're directly below, below my knees. Although looking down on them, they're actually slightly back. I would say the foot bags are in a great position overall. You feel very aggressive sitting on this bike. It uh, it feels like you're out to do some, you know, something. <laughs> the seat itself is very good. It looks rather small, but it's actually quite long. And uh, on this bike, going down the highway, you like to sit on the back of the seat, lean forward, that kind of holds your body up in the wind. There's no, there's no wind protection on this bike. Then when you get in town like this, you kind of move forward a little bit. Overall though, the seating is a, is a pretty comfortable bike overall. I think you could spend two or 300 miles on this easy in any day. I'm gonna spend about 300 miles on it today. 250, something like that. Suspension, now that's an interesting one. I think there's a bit of a difference between this and that on the super meter, especially in the rear of the bike. I think the front is pretty similar, except this has the 18 inch tire versus the 19 inch tire. So this actually feels a lot lighter in the front. Also the rake is different on this. We also sit up about two inches higher and I think that changes the uh, whole feel of the motorcycle plus the bar differences and the uh, foot peg positions. But the suspension itself, I think is pretty darn good. I think they've done something on the rear that makes it better. This bike needs to be adjusted for me, but it did work overall pretty well. I did have a couple sharp bumps. But nothing to write home about. So how about the brakes? Well, this has got the 320 disc on the front with the dual piston Bybury and uh, the 300 disc on the back, 300 millimeter disc on the back, which is very large, with the dual piston Bybury. I think they work very well. I love the brakes on these bikes. So how does the bike handle? How does it ride down the road and stuff like that? Uh, we'll start in the garage. I think this is actually easier in the garage. It has less rakes. So it's a little more stable at very low speeds, you know, pushing it around the garage or uh, in a park, driving around a parking lot or things like that. It has a low center of gravity and decent handling. Uh, the bars are right where you want them. You got good leverage over the bars because you're sitting so high on them, on top of them. It sits like a British bike, by the way. Picking up speed around town like this. Driving normal like this, it's fabulous. Very good handling, very predictable, very easy going. If you want to dial it up a little bit and you know drive it a little harder around town like this, I think it does very well. I think it's been tuned very well between 50 and 80 miles an hour. Uh, coming up here, I did a lot of, uh, well, I did a bunch of two lane blacktop, and I also did a bunch of four lane, which is a higher speed. And then here, when I got to Ames, the traffic was going about, and the four lane was going about, uh, I don't know, 75, 85 miles an hour. And this bike just did it perfectly. I didn't have to downshift or dance on the shifter or do any of that stuff. It just worked very well. That's something else I want to bring up too. The uh, tuning of the 2024 models has been changed. There's something different about them. They seem to be a lot smoother. They have a lot more um, range. They react a lot better. I'd say they did a lot more work to get these things to run a lot better. How's that sound? So I'm trying to find cons. You know, something to complain about. I've been told I need to do that more often. And the only really big one I can find on this particular motorcycle are the mirrors. And I think the big part of that is I'm just not used to them. I've never had mirrors like this before. They're a little difficult for me to get used to. I do have them tuned in pretty good now and they do work okay. Overall, the ride today has been very pleasant. This bike has been a lot of fun to ride. It's been easy going. It's been aggressive when it needs to be aggressive. It breaks very well. And hey, we are just about to get caught in traffic. How's that? Rush hour traffic. Okay, I'll catch up with you in a little bit. We're gonna do a little night riding. I'll let you know how that goes. We'll let you... Hey, just rolling into Minburn, Iowa here. Just got off about, uh, looks like about 19 miles, 18 miles, a pretty rough road. And uh, this bike did it really well. I was absolutely amazed at that. I think they've really done something different with the rear shocks. That's kind of my big takeaway here. Another thing to point out real quick are the handlebars and the higher sitting position. I feel like I'm sitting over the gauges more and I kind of like that. I feel more in control, you know. It feels like an interceptor, but it has more of an aggressive edge to it. And I kind of like that. I like the way it feels. Whether it's fast or not, I don't know. All right, y'all, it's about as close to dust as we're gonna get before we get home. Got about 236 miles on the bike. I got about another five or seven miles to go. 
So here's the uh, headlight on low beam. There's high beam. Low beam. High beam. Low beam. High beam. It seems to spread the beam out a little bit and go a little farther on high beam. Is it good? I don't know. I don't like to drive much darker than this. Hey, look at that moon. Check it out. Can you see that? Hope it's on the camera. Oh, better drive the bike, huh? <laughs> that is gorgeous. Look at that beautiful sun sunset. I've been driving west for the last, oh, 50 miles, 60 miles, 50 miles. And watching a sunset happen is really a beautiful thing. You know, for a while the sun's in your eyes and it's a nuisance. Then it gets down just low enough that the uh, the beauty of the sunset starts to come up. The bright oranges and yellows and reds and boy, that's just a treat to see and watch. Absolutely gorgeous. We are rolling into the mighty town of Atlantic, Iowa. I think a guy could ride four or 500 miles on this in a day. The seat is really that comfortable. It feels stable. We did about 50 miles of interstate also, and it felt pretty stable on the interstate. It's uh, not as tweaky as an Interceptor or a GT, Continental GT would be. It has all the good traits of an Interceptor, plus more, I would say, plus a little more stability at high speed. An Interceptor at high speed can get a little tweaky, not dangerous tweaky, but you can feel it. This is a lot more solid in that way. You know, this has a wheelbase that's about 3.7 inches longer than an Interceptor. I think that makes a lot of difference. I'm very impressed with this bike. I really could live with one of these. Uh, the question then is, did I do the right thing getting the Super Meteor over this? And I think it, I think I, and I think the answer is yes, because of what I intend to use the Super Meteor for. I intend to do a lot of, you know, five, four, five, six hundred mile days on that bike. You know, the Super Meteor is kind of ideal for that. It's uh, got a much more comfortable seat. It's got the uh, forward controls. This is a much more all around bike, I would say. Hey, quick shout out to my Royal Enfield Nervig jacket. This thing has been a treat. You know, I started the day, it was 66 degrees. I don't know what it is now, but uh, I'm sure it's quite a bit cooler. And the thing has just been a joy. You know, it really blocks the wind. I've got the uh, liner out of it now, but this jacket, if you include the liner, is good from 45 degrees on up. I think the other day I was riding with it on uh, 85 degrees, had all the vents open, very comfortable with it. Just a good all around jacket. Well, hey, if y'all are interested in a motorcycle like this, a newer used Royal Enfield, Triumph, classic British bike of any type, need parts, doodads, thing with jigs, gadzooks, anything at all, get yourself over to Baxter Cycle in the mighty mini tropolis of Marty, Iowa, or go to baxtercycle.com. Make sure you tell those fine folks that Fuzzy Biker sent you. Now, I'm just about home. My day is just about through. But if the weather's nice and uh, you're ready to go riding in your area, get out there and ride, my friends. Life is good. Wahoo!